Who do you credit for the, uh, the lessening of uh, militancy? First and foremost, the events of 9-11. Uh, secondly, the attack on the Indian parliament, because these two events, 9-11 focused attention on the region, uh, particularly Pakistan and Afghanistan. The attack on our parliament sparked a huge eye-to-eye -eye ball uh, confrontation between our two countries, which scared the rest of the world witless that these were two nuclear powers that were staring at each other down the barrel of a gun. And a lot of pressure was brought to bear on both countries to step back from, from that standpoint and begin a process of engagement uh, leading to lessening tensions. Obviously, uh, the leadership of the day, uh, particularly uh, the then Prime Minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee and your President, uh, General Musharraf, were instrumental in ensuring that uh, we could move back from a situation where everybody was seeing war clouds and, and reach a point where uh, we could shake hands and actually sit down and talk. Then why is there stagnancy now? Partly due to the situation in your country and, and partly due to the situation in ours. I don't think anybody had expected General Parvez Musharraf's uh, power uh, to erode as, as rapidly as it has done. Uh, I hadn't, certainly hadn't factored this into my considerations when I was talking about uh, working out a negotiated settlement with Pakistan. Uh, to the extent that uh, political pressures have always been brought to bear on Indian political leadership, sure, that's been a factor as well. Uh, let's not forget that our Prime Minister and his government has been almost, in terms of foreign policy, almost singularly focused on the Indo-US civilian nuclear agreement, which itself has run into political trouble. And, and therefore, both these factors have, have played a role in, in slowing down the political, the peace process. Some in Pakistan say that President Musharraf's four points, that pitch he made, are a huge compromise from Pakistan. They're a huge offer of goodwill, a huge gesture, but that hasn't been reciprocated from India. Well, I would caution uh, only this much that gov India uh, now, uh, uh, well, uh, let me put it this way, that at that time, Pakistan was not really what you would call a democracy. General Parvez Musharraf was the single uh, most important person in Pakistan, the single most powerful person in Pakistan. There was a parliament in place. But let's be honest, to what extent was the president accountable to that parliament? Uh, General Parvez Musharraf was in charge of the government, he was in charge of the army, he was in charge of all the security paraphernalia that was needed to move policy through but Pakistan. India was dealing with him. India, no, I'm not saying we shouldn't have dealt with him. What I'm saying is that Dr. Manmohan Singh didn't have that advantage. He heads a coalition of 24, 25 parties, including outside support from the left. He has a parliament that is incredibly vocal and an opposition that is sometimes very strident, even about policies that they themselves uh, initiated. And therefore, to have expected a public response uh, from Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to General Parvez Musharraf's public proposals was perhaps to have expected too much. But let's not forget, Dr. Manmohan Singh was very forthcoming in two speeches he made in Amritsar. Uh, the second one was when he flagged off the Amritsar Nankana Sahab bus, when he talked exactly along the lines of General Parvez Musharraf's four-point formula in terms of joint power sharing arrangements, in terms of people-to-people -people contact, in terms of soft borders, in terms of uh, lines cannot be uh, redrawn, that be, but they can be made irrelevant. And there was, to my understanding, uh, a fair amount of progress that was made behind the scenes in our dialogue with your country. Uh, but yes, uh, there, there is... Uh, Certainly, the, the complaint can be made from your side that we didn't publicly respond, perhaps as uh, openly as we should have done to General Musharraf's suggestions. I've made this complaint myself. And that was because of political constraints, you think? What other constraints would there be? Is there, uh, I guess you could call it the mood, is the mood in India, the people of India, do, are they in the mood for peace with Pakistan? Yes. And is the government selling that pitch to the people? No. Uh, peace with Pakistan is today at least not an issue uh, that is getting much traction in terms of uh, a discourse amongst the people or uh, as a selling point of this government. What do you think that is? Well, I think this government has its plate full with so many problems they don't know where to start. Uh, you have inflation at 7%. You have a stock market that's shown a tremendous fall. Uh, you have a slowing, slowing down of, of growth. Uh, you have an uh, Indo-US civilian nuclear agreement, which may not be uh, a talking point, but it's something that the government has attached a lot of uh, political capital to. 
you have a continued crisis in agriculture. And uh, whether we like it or not, Kashmir is uh, relatively peaceful and therefore it's almost a case of out of sight is out of mind. And uh, since Kashmir is anyway peaceful, it's not something they need to talk about. So there's bigger fish to fry. There are, yeah, in a country of, of this size. But Kashmir is pretty important, Mr. Abdullah. I'm not, really, I'm not saying that it's not important to the government. It's just not a selling point for the government at this point. It might be when the election come up, but it's not a selling point right now. And I guess they're right. They don't really have much to sell in terms of, of any concrete achievements. We have to take a short break here with Omar Abdullah talking about Kashmir on Talk Back on Eye on India series. Don't go anywhere.